Good morning everybody and welcome to Thursday's Thought. I'm Tonya, part of the clergy team here in Porter's Head. I'm going to launch straight in with the Gospel reading. It's from Matthew's Gospel. Jesus is saying, And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive your sins. I love the start of that reading. Babbling like pagans, don't be, don't do not babble to God. I wonder, have you ever babbled to God? Prayer is an integral part of the Christian life. But I wonder, why do we pray? And what is it all about? Prayer, of course, is not a magical formula. It does not give us what we want. It's not either the reserve for holy people, whoever they may be, and nor is it kept for just special days or, or holy places. Prayer, I think, is just about talking to God. In talking to God, we get a relationship with God. When we speak with one another, the more we speak, the more we share, the deeper our relationship. The same, of course, with God. I'm sure we all know that. We come to God. We talk. We also must listen as well. But why pray? If you turn to the Psalms, in the Psalms we find the writer writing this. You know everything I'm going to say before I start the first sentence. If God knows what we are going to say before we say it, then what on earth is the point of praying? Well, I think there are several reasons. See if you agree with these. Can include thanking God for what he has given us. Praising God for who he is. Asking God for help or telling him we're sorry and asking for forgiveness. Or simply just telling God what is on our hearts. In Philippian, Paul encouraged us to let your requests be made known to God. And when we look in the gospel time and again, we find that Jesus went and prayed. But what should we pray? In the reading, the disciples were asking Jesus, teach us to pray. So he taught them this example, the Lord's Prayer. I'm going to pray it now and I'm going to invite you, if you wish, to join in the words with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This famous prayer, it shows us that prayer is relational. In it we're talking to God our Father. We pray not that we get what we want, but that God's will is done and that we get what we need. It addresses the problem of sin asking in confidence that God will forgive our sins. 
but reminding ourselves that we too have to have an attitude of forgiveness towards others. And it's a prayer of praise, restating who God is. How then should we pray? Well, thank goodness there's no set answer. But we can look to Jesus for clues. Jesus often took himself away to quiet places. Many people find going into a church or a quiet room really helpful when they want to pray. Others go out walking and have that as a prayer time. Some look at an icon, picture of Jesus or light a candle. From time to time I use one of these, it's my holding cross. When I really need to focus and I want my mind to empty, I find I grab this and I hold it and just something about me draws me closer to God and lets me truly tell God what is on my heart and who it is that I want to pray for. Maybe you've got one. If you haven't got one and you'd like one, let me know because I can easily source these for you. Answers to prayer, finally. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus put it this way. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If then, though you are evil, know how to, get, how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask? Beautiful. Amen. Well, I'm going to go now. I hope the rest of your day is just lovely. I hope you're out enjoying this sunshine or if you don't like it, trying to find some shade. Um, however it is, I, I just send blessings on your day and I'll see you soon. Bye.